If you're like me, you probably grew up watching Disney Channel, Cartoon Network, and Disney XD. <laughs> One of the shows I liked was Randy Cunningham 9th Grade Ninja, so I thought I'd revisit it today. I'll admit, I was inspired to do this one by another YouTuber named Ellis Mark, who did ranking videos like this on other shows like Regular Show. I don't know if he was the first to do it, but that's where I got my inspiration from. Why Randy Cunningham 9th Grade Ninja? I just think it was a show not many people remember, but probably have some suppressed memories about it. Plus, I found myself enjoying this show when I watched it when I was a child, so here we are. Since each episode is split into two segments, I wanted to rank them instead of the whole episode, just to be a little different. Being the very first thing in the show, does this segment introduce everything well to the audience? Yeah, I think so. We get the protagonist, who is voiced by Sonic. Uh, my commentary on the fleeting nature of summer. One of the villains, McFist, and the formula we'll probably be following for the whole show. Some monster attacks. Randy tries to fight it, fails, then goes to the Ninja Nomicon for help. It gives him help, and he defeats the monster. They also introduce Howard, who is Randy's best friend and he finds out Randy's secret immediately. So now we won't have any annoying episodes relating to Howard finding out. The opening for the show actually gives us a good rundown about the whole ninja thing. Every four years, a new ninja is chosen to protect the school from evil things. Pretty good first segment. One of Randy's fellow students turns into a monster thanks to this evil, the sorcerer. Randy has to defeat the evil triangle player. While this is a pretty bare bones segment, its purpose is to establish the second antagonist of the show. While the sorcerer is locked up under the school, he can turn people into monsters using their negative emotions when they're like crying or something. The only way to turn them back is to destroy the one thing they hold most dear. This is another great introduction to this concept, but it's bogged down by this dumb B-plot of Howard wanting to sit in the cool kids area. I forgot for a moment that this was set in a high school. Definitely worse than Last Stall on the left. Randy and Howard want to spit into a volcano while on a school field trip, and the B-plot has McFist's assistant, Viceroy, getting rid of all these little amoeba things. He hires this guy to dump them in the same coincidental volcano which Randy's at. The little guys get their hands on a Dorito, which makes them all combine. Randy has to stop the Nacho Monster and save his friends. While the segment focuses on Randy's classmates, None of them leave much of an impression, but I like Viceroy. It's neat how the two plots come together, and it's what bumps it above Got Stank. What a dumb name. Randy and Howard are judges in a talent show. When one of the students starts to get monstified, Randy leaves Howard, but he just lays into the other students, creating more monsters. This is better than having just one monster for the segment, and I enjoyed this one quite a bit. We are also introduced to Howard's sister, Heidi. Randy also shows off other weapons that are in the ninja suit. We've seen the sword before, but now he's got some discs, this chain thing, and tripping balls. The Nomicon gives us some backstory for the sorcerer, revealing that he was sealed up by a past ninja using a special stone. Man, this segment's top of the list. Howard accidentally tells Heidi's livestream and half the school that he knows the ninja's secret identity. McFist is for some reason watching this and scoops Howard up to interrogate him using this mind reader. He manages to dodge thinking about Randy by remembering this annoying song that's stuck in his head. Randy doesn't feel like he's in this segment very much because he kind of isn't. Like he's pissed that Howard almost spilled the beans, but that's really it. Definitely the worst episode so far. Howard needs to get himself a mystical doctor's note so he doesn't have to climb a rope. Yeah, that's it. A lot of the episodes so far have been about Howard. Randy goes with him and they're also accompanied by another classmate, Julian. They traverse an old gym and get the note with Julian being stanked along the way. That's their word, not mine. Howard ends up climbing the rope anyway. Yeah, I can't say I'm all that much of a fan of this segment, but my main problem is that Randy feels like a side character. He's just like there. This episode goes right under God Stank, but above Gossip Boy. McFist gets a sample of Randy's booger, ill, and wants to use his stepson's birthday party to figure out who the ninja is. This segment's just disgusting. There's so much snot and boogers and I just hate it. Randy has to stop his identity from being revealed. That's really it. Bottom of the list. Randy obtains a box from one of McFist's robots, which makes fart noises, and he conveniently needs a science fair project, so boom. Don't lie to me. You're wondering where the killer potatoes are. Well, this fart cube brings this potato alive and then a robot shows up. If you've been paying close attention, then you'll realize that the segment has been alternating between McFist robots and the sorcerer's monster. But we just got two McFist things back to back. Nice change of pace. Nothing else really happens though. In between the golden doctor's note and gossip boy. 
Mrs. Driscoll's skeleton husband is brought to life by Randy after he tries to use a restricted ninja technique. The Bag of Bones wants to finish his doomsday bomb from when he was still alive. I really like this segment. Randy learning new ninja stuff is a cool idea. Having Viceroy be involved with Jerry is fun. And they even return to the place where the volcano was from Monster Dump. All this just makes this segment really fun to watch. And there was a few lines that made me laugh. Put me back, put me back. How does the bow tie stay on? That makes no sense. It's top of the list. This whole episode is set on Halloween, so this segment takes place right after the last one. McFist Candy starts turning everyone into zombies. Randy cures everyone by making them vomit up the candy. This is another gross segment. This segment introduced Teresa and Debbie Kang, who I'm pretty sure are reoccurring characters later, so I thought I'd mention it. I don't know what's going on, but there's a lot of references. Is that Michael Jackson? Below Dawn of the Driscoll, this segment goes. Man, this episode was pretty good. McFist of Fury is a weird segment because Randy doesn't seem to know that McFist is the one sending robots after him. So I did some digging and it turns out that Disney Plus got the order of this one wrong. This segment should have been right after So You Think You Can Stank. Now that that's cleared up, what's the segment actually about? Randy is lured into a trap by McFist and has to defeat him. Wow, crazy. Above House of the Thousand Boogers. It will be below that, but the booger stuff just really grossed me out. Randy has gotten a little cocky after easily taking out McFist's robots. So when the Nomicon tells Randy to humble himself, he doesn't listen. This pisses off the book because it has feelings. So when Randy needs help, it refuses to open. I think this was a good segment. There's a tiny bit of character development for Randy and Debbie Kang returns in between Monster Dump and Last Stall on the left. Howard is getting mad at Randy for always disappearing to do ninja stuff. And with the Battle of the Bands coming up, he knows it'll happen again. McFist plans a truth teller device on Heidi's guitar, and he gets Randy to admit he's the ninja, but Howard covers for him and smashes the machine. Pretty okay segment, but nothing all that crazy. Right below, got stank. Randy learns a new ninja technique, the air fist, which he actually uses from here on out. He also offends Howard by calling him fat. I thought this was really cool when I watched it as a child, and I still think it is cool. When characters learn new moves and continue to use them, it's great. This is definitely below Night of the Living McFizzles. Randy runs out of smoke bombs. Oh heavens. So he needs to get some more from this tree. But uh oh, the tree is taken by McFist for his Christmas party. The usual fighting happens and Randy plants a new tree. Bit of a mess segment. Under the tail of the Golden Doctor's note. Randy and Howard attend a ninja school ran by Mac Amphi. This guy was actually a past ninja. And when his four years were up, he refused to give up the title, so he had his suit taken. Now he swears he'll take it back. Great idea bringing back a past ninja, and he gets away in the end, so I'm sure he'll show up later on. Above 30 seconds to math. It's been a while since we had a sorcerer segment. After Randy fries the power to the school, a stank student that was frozen in the freezer is let loose. After de-stanking it, Randy discovers that this kid is from 1985 and was left undealt by the past ninja at the time. Wait, that's Mac Amphi! Dickie gets re-stanked, but he's not tied to any objects. What he holds most dear is this girl he liked back in his time, who is conveniently a teacher at the school. So the two reunite and the kid ages. This was such a cool way to use all the concepts in the show. This whole segment is even a bit of a parody of Back to the Future. This goes under Monster Drill. Randy sabotages a jet ski, which injures a racer. He has to learn to own up to his mistakes. What a boring segment. We were on such a roll, so seeing this was a little disappointing. Bottom of the list. Randy breaks his ninja sword, so he needs a new one. He goes to the school's metalwork teacher, who reveals he's been making swords for the ninja for a long time. Before Randy can actually get a new sword, he has to prove he's responsible by nursing this balloon sword. Okay, we're back to the okay episodes. More ninja lore is sweet, and the new sword actually looks different, and this design is the standard now. It is a little strange that the sword needs to be replaced, as in past episodes, Randy's been able to use two swords. I don't know, I guess it doesn't really matter. Below Stank to the Future. McFist sends a robot kid to Randy's school to find out the ninja's identity. Uh, he does. But Randy destroys him before McFist can find out. Okay, episode. Nothing crazy, though. Below 30 seconds to math. That's also a secret identity segment. Wow. 
Randy must stop a giant robot that's unknowingly being controlled by Howard through a video game. This is another meh segment in my opinion. The segments like this, with not much going on, are definitely ones that I hate the most. They aren't unwatchable by any means, but there isn't any other aspects to it. Under McFist of Fury. After Randy accidentally breaks a stone in the school's foyer, it unleashes a bird demon called the Tengu, which possesses Howard. The Nomicon tells Randy that the ninja suit and the Tengu are connected, so Randy sacrifices being the ninja to save his friend. The Tengu returns to the stone, and the ninja is gone. Just kidding. Top of the list. This has everything I like in a segment. Ninja lore, good monsters, some heart, and something else that will come up later, so I'll wait to talk about that. There's also a little foreshadowing at the end, which hints towards a possible return of the Tengu. Great name. Remember that kid Julian from all the way back in that Doctor's Note segment? Well, he turns himself and all of his friends into monsters to get back at their fellow students. He's able to do this after Randy accidentally tells him the secret ingredient to getting stanked. I like this segment because of the use of Julian and the other students. And there's some D&D stuff in here, above Monster Dump. Randy and Howard go to a Grave Puncher movie where they accidentally bring it to life. The whole segment is spent fighting this guy and what makes this segment so cool in my eyes is the first casual use of the Air Fist and a new ability, the Tengu Fireball. That's why Evil Spirit Week is top of the list. This segment goes under Dawn of the Driscoll. Howard is sent to Detention Island, along with Bash, Bucky and Morgan. Randy's there too. They each have to face a punishment to escape but Randy keeps getting in the way. The lesson learned here is even though Randy's the ninja, he shouldn't fight everyone's battles. Below Der Monster Club. Bash accidentally de-stanks a student, so everyone now believes that he's the ninja. This obviously leads to him accidentally getting kidnapped by his stepdad's robo-apes. Kind of a mess segment, but I like how we're getting more episode with other characters in the spotlight. Above Gossip Boy. Randy outflips a foreign exchange student after he steals Randy's clout on the internet. This causes the student to get stanked. Boring segment, bottom of the list. While the entire school watches an intense chess match with a different school, Randy practices with some more balls in the Nomicon. Because Norrisville High's winning streak is lost by McFist's robot, everyone gets stanked, and it's Howard who saves everyone by whipping out some chess skills out of nowhere. Pretty good segment, and Randy uses those new balls to fight off the students. Above Sword Quest. Randy loses the Ninja Nomicon, and after a few comedic pass-offs, it ends up with McFist and the Sorcerer. This is actually the first time Randy and the Sorcerer have met face to face, and the Sorcerer shows off a new trick. After getting the book back, Randy must use every lesson he's learned by now to escape. Another decent segment, but that's the wrong sword design. Above Monster Drill. All of the McFist Robo Apes go on strike after being sick of McFist's treatment. They go from protesting to full ape mode. I like some of the jokes in this segment, but the plot isn't anything crazy. Below 30 seconds to math. Howard is mistaken as the ninja by a robot, so Randy needs to sneak into a moustache club party on McFist's yacht to save him. Yeah, that's really the plot, but Randy needs a stash of his own, so he learns a new ninja technique. He can alter his appearance by using ninja energy. Randy proceeds to fight with his overgrown moustache. I don't think we'll ever see this ability again. Even though this moustache stuff was pretty dumb, I still like this segment. Above stanks like Teen Spirit. Randy finds himself in a rap battle, but the only rhyme he knows is a ninja technique that summons a giant sandworm. And since he directed this rhyme towards his opponent, they get taken. And so does Howard. I wasn't expecting another Ninja Learns New Technique segment right after the last one, but I'm here for it. Randy makes some sand ninjas to help him, using more rhymes. And it's just cool, okay? Below Raiders of the Lost Nomicon. Oh boy, a lot happens in this one. When the first ninja locked the sorcerer away all those years ago, he used a stone and a key, which was hidden away. Every 100 years, the key reveals itself. So Randy and Howard, who are cable tied together, must go get it before the sorcerer does. The sorcerer uses Flute Girl and Steven to fetch it for him. And this stank monster looks disgusting. Anyway, Randy gets the key, plugs it into the Nomicon, and a samurai tells him to protect the key, as he'll need it in the final battle. Ooh, story. Right under Evil Spirit Week, 
The conflict is that Randy is scared of chickens. McFist creates a machine that uses people's fears against them. This is a pretty effective way to get the ninja, as this plan works. Until it doesn't. Okay, segment. Below monster dump. This is a whole episode story. Get this. All the way back in Gossip Boy, Randy wishes that he had some sort of mind-wiping ability. Well, he kind of actually does, which he plans on using against this robot, who keeps adapting to Randy's moves. Instead, Randy wiped his own mind, so now Howard has to don the mask and be the ninja. This is such a good episode. It's so funny, and the idea is absolutely fantastic. Normally the stanking stuff and the McFist robots are separate from each other, but when that learning bot learns negative emotions, it gets stanked. And I can't believe that sentence just came out of my mouth. We even get a glimpse at a past ninja, and find out why Randy got his memory wiped by that door. When the ninja's training is complete, he must have his mind wiped so his knowledge can become part of the Nomicon. Both Randy and Howard even use those weird balls. Hands down the best episode there is. So far anyway. Mac Amphi returns with a new attitude on life, until Randy reveals himself as the ninja, and now Mac's coming for him. Since we just learned of the whole mind wiping thing, Mac never got his mind wiped, so Randy has to get him into the Nomicon. This part goes well until Randy finds himself outmatched by Mac, who has better control and more abilities since it's revealed that he was the ninja for six years. Bro must have repeated. Twice. There was a cool fight, and Randy manages to trick Mac into getting his mind wiped. I kind of wish that he didn't get his mind erased so he could still be a villain later on, but I'm happy with this segment. Below Evil Spirit Week. Randy finds himself in a swamp looking for quicksand when he's caught in a trap. But don't worry, he's got his ninja suit. Oh, yeah, he abused his power, and now the suit won't work. And at the worst time too. Randy has to save Howard from this swamp wizard. I like how we're getting more villains than just the sorcerer and McFist. It keeps the show fresh. Above last stall on the left. Randy and Howard get a job at a theatre to pay for a bag. Wow, that's so wicked. While there, Howard becomes the manager and starts to piss Randy off. Then the ninja takes out these robots. Lame segment. Under McFist of Fury. Randy convinces McFist's older brother to take over McFist Industries. But this goes horribly wrong. That's really everything I have to say. I honestly thought we would have been past these kinds of segments, but here we are with all the fart machines. Bottom of the list. Randy steals some new, incredibly short shorts from McFist, so McFist himself sends a robot ball to find the ninja. It's another kind of boring segment, but I like this soccer player guy. Above Silent Punch, Deadly Punch. Randy frees some strange animals from a McFreak show. They end up going feral after a while, so Randy must do the right thing and set them free. The McFreaks come from Detention Island, even though we didn't see any weird animals there. But it's still cool. The segment itself is mediocre. Above Monster Dump. All the boys in the school are thirsting over this girl who turns out to be the sorceress. What? She tries to free the sorcerer, so Randy needs to use his nose to beat her. Another new villain, yes! And we get another flashback where we see a past ninja. The sorceress disappears before being properly defeated, so we'll probably see her again. Under Enter the Nomicon. Bash keeps pranking everyone at school, so Randy pranks him back harder. This was a bad idea, and now Bash has a pranking gun, which turns into a pranking monster. I'm starting to get heavy whiplash from going back and forth on segments that are pretty good to pretty bad. But we do see that past ninja again, above new kid on the block. While celebrating Ninja Day, a new hero shows up and quickly proves that the ninja isn't needed anymore. This causes Randy to quit. But this was McFist's plan all along, and he was the new hero. I enjoyed this one. I like McFist actually getting involved for once. Below Swampy Seconds. This one's gonna need a little bit more explaining. A student named Ranginald Bagel is being hunted by McFist. Why? Well, back in Swampy Seconds, that's the fake name Randy told the Swamp Magician. That same guy told McFist that Ranginald was the ninja, and here we are. Nice continuity, but still not a special segment. Mid, actually. Under Ninja Camp. Randy and Howard want to watch this satellite fall out of the sky, but Howard breaks their binoculars. They go to get another one, but Howard just keeps breaking things. This data allows Viceroy to create a robot that's 100% indestructible. Randy defeats it using that satellite, above McFreaks. 
the sorceress returns and locks everyone from school in a club. Not the worst place to get trapped in. Randy has to protect everyone and defeat the sorceress, but he has his hands full. When he's able to ninja up, the sorceress tries to banish him to the land of shadows, which is where she was trapped. Randy sacrifices himself to send her back, but Howard comes in clutch. This was a decent segment with some subtle foreshadowing. Above Grave Punch of the movie. Randy has finally had enough and out McFist as the villain he is. Everyone starts to hate McFist, which causes him to break down. This opens the door for the sorcerer to stank McFist, which I was waiting for. Anyway, Randy D stanks him and everyone loves him again. Great concept for a segment, above Night of the Living McFizzles. Randy starts relying on the Nomicon for every decision, so it traps him inside the book and sends out an evil Randy. I don't know if this was the Nomicon just being a dick or it's a lesson or what. Howard gets sent into the Nomicon and Randy exits in Howard's body and has to fight himself. Everyone gets back to their correct body and Randy even saves the rampaging Teresa. Man, this was a great segment. Seeing Howard in the book, watching Randy try to fight himself in Howard's body is just fun. Below Sorcerer in Love. We've got another full episode, baby. Randy and Howard are accidentally sent to the past where they run into a yet to be imprisoned sorcerer. Randy changes the past, resulting in the sorcerer being freed in the present. Randy must team up with Ninja Prime, the first ever ninja to defeat and seal the sorcerer. This episode has so many great moments. Randy fights alongside Howard, who is once again possessed by the Tengu. Ninja Prime gets a look at the Nomicon, and there's even some setup for next season. It was a really creative episode, and I really hope season two carries this momentum, as this is the season finale. It does a great job at that. Top of the list. It's a hot day in Norrisville, so luckily there's a giant water slide. Randy's too scared to ride it, so he breaks it, which cuts the water off keeping this giant shark moist and docile. It goes on a rampage and the ninja puts it back in the lake. That was honestly a really odd segment in my opinion. Just very specific. Anyway, it's whatever. Below the monster club. The heat wave continues, so Randy purposefully lets a robot defeat him. You're probably asking why. Well, Howard's dad got a promotion at McFist Company to make robots, so he's using this promotion to buy a pool for Howard. Randy takes the dive to enjoy the pool, but everything goes south, and Howard's dad is demoted. Below Gossip Boy. Catfish is back once more, being controlled by the sorcerer. When Randy meddled with the past, four of the sorcerer's balls were spread throughout Norrisville, and Catfish found one of them. Randy fights off the stank Catfish, and now he has to keep the power orb safe. Pretty solid segment, below Sorcerer in Love. Howard turns into a giant baby, I think, after eating too many soupsicles. That's a pretty standard segment, but Debbie Kang returns, which I like. I think some of the other side characters should have some spotlight as our small group of main characters are getting a little stale at this point. The segment even ends with Debbie trying to figure out who the ninja is. Hopefully this gets some payoff eventually. Below Secret Stash. Randy and Howard attend Julian's birthday party, and Randy stupidly brings the power orb with him. Julian steals the ball and uses its power to cause havoc. Julian opens a portal to the Land of Shadows, which is cool to see return, and he splits into two when he tries to save the ball after it's chucked in. But it wasn't the actual ball. Howard did a bait and switch. Now this evil Julian is stuck in the Realm of Shadows, with our regular Julian being safe. I like how they expanded Julian's character as that was a complaint I had in the past, and the Nomicon gives us a brief backstory for the Sorcerer. He came from the Land of Shadows after this guy released him. Lots of great world building in this segment. Above Welcome Back Catfish. Randy starts to become jealous when Howard starts hanging out with other classmates, so he tries to break up the friendships. This causes Bucky, Dave, and this guy to get stanked, so Randy has to fess up. It's nice how this segment is about Randy and Howard's friendship, but this premise is very bare bones and unoriginal. Originally, segments like this would have one little element that keeps it from the bottom of the list, but this one doesn't, so bottom of the list. An ex-bandmate of Randy and Howard returns to Norrisville after getting super famous and invites the two to play with him on stage. This ends up being a trick by Lavanda to get revenge on the two for kicking him out of 30 seconds to math. 
three months ago. Lavander isn't actually a good guitar player, so it was the sorcerer who gifted him that skill, and now he's back. He gets stanked and Randy fights him with music. This was a pretty sweet segment. I think Lavander is a deep-ish character, at least more than the other side characters, and the music duel was so cool as Randy's in his tango colors. The ending's nice as well as they repair their friendship. Above Secret Stash. Howard and Randy save, in quotes, the mascot of Whoopi World, Whoopi. This disappearance causes Viceroy to build a new Whoopi, who is a dick. Whoopi 2 plans to kill the original Whoopi, but the ninja stops him. I do think this segment is a little lame, but I do enjoy the running joke of Whoopi only being able to say one thing. Uh, Whoopi, is there like a trick to this? Well, yeah. Could you, could you tell me what it is? Well, yeah. I've said Whoopi way too many times. Under Rise of the Planet of the Robo Apes. Hey, that was the last time we saw Whoopi World. That's funny. For school, Randy and Howard have a baby, a baloney baby, which gets some of Viceroy's new mood juice on it. This makes the baloney come to life when negative emotions are around. Randy, with Howard's help, calms it down by singing. This is probably the worst segment so far. There are no other side characters that are fun, no funny moments, and just a dumb premise. Bottom of the list. Bucky writes the ninja a song, which is kind of bad, and Randy hates it, but because he's a people pleaser, Randy tells Bucky he likes it. This causes the song to plague Randy, and he tells Bucky he hates it in front of so many people. Then fighting happens. See, segments like this would go right at the bottom if it wasn't for Bucky. Having reoccurring side characters in these concepts helped the show and the segments. But this is still a mess segment. Under McHugger Games. Randy lies to Howard about an abandoned fudge factory, but when they go to prove Randy's lie, they find one actually being there. McFist had it made just then, to hide all of his ninja killing robots from Ruth. Who's Ruth? She's Ruth. The ninja fights off all the robots, with past robots making appearances. The joke about Viceroy not listening to McFist is dumb, and I don't like this segment. Below True Bromance. Randy and Howard must protect their title of tasting champs in this tasting competition. But Randy pushes Howard too hard and he burns his taste buds. Randy seeks help in the Nomicon because he's terrible at tasting. The book makes his senses go into overdrive. We haven't had a new ninja ability in a while and I can't say this one is all that cool or interesting. The segment does have a good premise with McFist tasting technology going against Randy's ninja technique, but it does eventually fall back into that formula of fighting a monster and learning a lesson. Below last stall on the left. McFist causes Viceroy's pet, I think, to be lost out in the world. Randy and Howard take him in and use him to play video games while Viceroy's looking for him. I feel like we've been in this long stretch of segments that have nothing to do with ninja stuff and it's starting to make this season feel really repetitive. It's been so long since we've seen any follow-ups to setups in the season like Evil Julian and Debbie Kang trying to figure out who the ninja is. The show needs to start picking up the slack because all these segments are just bottom of the list material. We haven't even seen the sorcerer stank anyone in a while. Best Buds was close, but even then that was lackluster. Under on the pull front. Randy hears of a secret McFist plan, so he starts to hang out with Bash to figure out what's going on. To earn Bash's trust, Randy cuts his hair and starts being an ass to Howard. He does this for long enough that he generally starts acting like this. It's a mean girl's dilemma. Randy stops the mysterious plan, but it was actually just a celebration for Bash passing his classes. Bash's gift minibike is destroyed, which causes him to stank out. I think the show heard my complaints because we actually have a decent segment. We get some stanking, a nice premise, and Randy does the healing technique he learned all the way back in Dawn of the Driscoll. Even little stuff like that makes the segment better in my opinion. Above Secret Stash. We have another Halloween episode, so let's hope it carries again. Randy and Howard need to make their shitty haunted house more scary, so Randy heads into the Nomicon for help. That's where he finds more restricted ninja stuff. He unleashes the essence of terror, which turns him into the halloween -ger. This power allows him to bring decorations alive, and also turns others into their costumes. Randy loses control of the suit, and it starts acting on its own. Everyone must use the power of hugs to defeat him. Now this segment is so fucking stupid, but I honestly love it. The halloween -ger is so cool, and the color change to the suit looks really nice. The way they win is dumb, but really funny. And this little ending is fun. Below Sorcerer in Love. Randy tells Howard, Bucky, Doug, and Steve a scary story of a kid who farted for a minute and drowned in mud. They believe him, but it's just a story until that kid who is now a man shows up. He's actually a nice guy and that fart did happen, but he just went and lived in the woods. Anyway, Mr. Fart farts again. Everyone laughs at him and he gets upset, allowing the sorcerer to stank him. Randy fights him off, but this ends up just being a story being told by Randy. So none of that happened? I'm not sure how I feel about this because 
It's a fun twist, but Randy uses the Earth attack for the first time since it was introduced. So this not being canon is sad. The segment is still whatever though. Below Sword Quest. Randy and Howard start to swindle others out of their tickets during laser tag by using the ninja suit. While doing this, he's being tracked by Viceroy and sends some robots to take him out. Lame premise, lame use of the ninja. This is just a shit segment, bottom of the list. Randy finds himself fighting this thing over a power ball, but he's forced to destroy it and blows up the world. Oh, that was just a dream. If you get what the name of the segment is referencing, Randy is stuck in a dream loop, with Howard trying really hard to get that ball in a hole. The power ball was controlling Randy in his slumber to unlock the sorcerer's hole. Obviously, I got the idea of it being a dream segment, but there was a lot of hints throughout. This is clever, as children probably won't put it together right away. It's a pretty solid concept, and having the power ball be relevant again is nice. But I can't wait for it to disappear next episode. Above unstank my heart. Randy must save the game hole after McFist destroys it and tries to buy it. He needs to help get a game from a storage shed to the hole while Howard stalls. This is meant to be a Christmas segment and it's a nice vibe, but the whole segment doesn't have much to do with Christmas. Sorry, they mention Hanukkah, but that's it. I will say it's a nice premise with good ideas and Randy even learns a new ninja technique, the Hydra Hand. This was actually shown off before in Enter the Nomicon when Mac Amphi used it. I have no idea if he'll use it again, but it's cool that it came back. It's just a shame Randy learns it so quickly. Like, look at this. What do you got for Icy Roads? <sighs> ninja Hydro Hand? Overall, an above average segment, right above Night of the Living McFizzles. Evil Julian at last returned to the show. He switches places with our normal weird Julian and attacks Randy in this indoor snow mountain. Is this a real thing? Because I would 100% be there if so. It's so refreshing having something new happen. And now I feel bad for Julian. He was ditched by Randy and Howard, and now he's trapped in the land of shadows. Randy also has a really weird moment with the Nomicon. I get it, shh, come here. Oh yeah, you like when I turn your pages, don't you? I think it's really cool how they made a random side character a proper villain. Below Julian's birthday surprise. Randy fakes being sick to have a day off, which allows everything to get extremely out of hand. Randy's quarantined, which gave me some flashbacks. Howard tells McFist that the ninja's chucking a sickie, and a missile gets sent to Randy's house. A segment about Randy having a day off sounds like it'd be in early season one, but I guess it works here too. Below Rise of the Planet of the Robo Apes. Howard gets a gift from his uncle in Australia. That's me, I'm Australia. It's a boomerang, which he loses at McFist's house. Randy and Howard get it back, but just have too much damn fun in the McHouse. They are attacked by robots and they get out. Randy ninjaed up in the house and it's full of cameras, so he's worried that McFist will know who he is, but this plot gets dropped. There's actually a few jokes that made me laugh. Like, look at the Nomicon's lesson. Don't go in someone else's house. The comedy can't save this segment from being too low, however. Below the McHugger games. Randy starts to get blinded by some students calling him a shoob, which is one of the show's made-up slang. The culprits for this are the Wienermans. This all actually makes Randy blind when he's in his ninja suit. So he gets some help from Ward Smith, the swordsmith. I wasn't expecting this, as this would be normally the Nomicon's job. Randy learns to tune everyone out, and the day is saved. McFist is also in love with this robo-dog, which is pretty funny. I like this segment because of the message it's trying to get across. Above all the juice that fish to swim. Randy starts to act in commercials for some local businesses, but when they take up a McFist brand deal, the business owners become unhappy. You know where this goes. This segment isn't all that special, but Hollywood Howie is a beast by himself. I think there's been less sorcerer segments because its formula is becoming pretty stale. Below the Monster Club. Howard tries to convince Randy that he's a mastermind, which he does pretty well, and in the background, Evil Julian is still on the hunt for the power ball. Randy just hands it over to him because he thinks it's one of Howard's tricks, but nope. Now Evil Julian has the power ball and parts of a McFist robot are all used to defeat Randy. Except he doesn't and Randy tries to destroy the ball. Even though in Ninjaception, destroying the ball destroyed the world. It doesn't get destroyed, only fusing with Julian with the robot parts. This is a great segment, honestly. Everything just built on itself nicely. And Evil Julian's story is still playing out, so I'm excited to see where this goes. Below, let the Wonk one in. Randy and Howard make up a beast of legend to gain some clout, but when a monster hunter comes in and actually captures their fake beast, 
they are obviously skeptical. They prove this monster is fake, which stanks the hunter, and they save him. Meh segment, but there is a little bit of development in Randy and Teresa's relationship. She's been subtly into Randy since Night of the Living McFizzles. Also, they say this. You want an ussy? Um... What's an ussy? What was Fowler bugging you about? We took an ussy. Stop saying that! Below 30 seconds to math. Randy's identity as the ninja is revealed to the public. Debbie Kang's off-screen investigation eventually leads her to Randy as he starts to get sloppy hiding it. Randy tries to convince her otherwise, but has no choice but to send her into the Nomicon. It's here where he pretty much gives in, so the Nomicon tries to mind wipe Randy for breaking the number one rule, even though Howard knows. He manages to prove he's not the ninja thanks to Howard's help, and the Nomicon mind wipes Debbie, which is what Randy should have done to begin with. There's a fourth wall joke as well. I know, Randy Cunningham, ninth grade ninja? It sounds ridiculous. This was a really interesting segment that wraps up Debbie Kang's plot pretty well. I wish we had one or two more segments about her search, but it's whatever. Above Welcome Back Catfish. When the Sorcerer lost four of his power balls at the end of Season 1, we know that Evil Julian has won. But this segment shows us that Ninja Prime found one back in his time and entrusted someone to guard it. Flash forward to now, and Randy needs to go check on the Guardian, who ends up being Plop Plop, which sounds like something I would do on the toilet. Oh! Plops was there in that season 1 episode, so he leaves his post to hang out with Randy and Howard. This allows the sorcerer to manipulate Plop into bringing him the Powerball. Randy has to send Plop Plop into the Nomicon, where he'll be safe, and now he's left with the second Powerball. Glad to see they remember all the Powerball stuff, but I didn't expect Plop Plop to return. Good segment, below Mastermind of Disaster Mind. Viceroy starts to create monsters ripped straight out of this in-world cartoon, which is like a He-Man parody or something. Randy and Howard also watch this show and start to live it through fighting these robots. Viceroy eventually creates one that's off script, so Randy has to figure out his own way to defeat it. While this segment doesn't add anything big to the show, it still plays around with the show's formula, and I respect that. Above 30 seconds to math. Howard gets grounded. Because him and Randy messed up Howard's living room, they blame it on the ninja, which gets Howard's dad angry. Then Randy trashes Mort's office, and some misunderstandings later, Mort tries to kill Randy. This is again another segment that shakes up the usual formula and makes for an interesting segment. Mort getting more depth is nice as well. Above Rogue, Hero of the Past. Howard and Randy need to attend Saturday school because of the ninja cancelling school so many times. Howard finds himself getting increasingly smart, so Randy uses him to get Saturday school over and done with. This is a bad thing, however, as Howard becomes an evil genius and creates a black hole. Randy and Howard fighting in his mind is a great concept, and I think this segment is really entertaining. I love when normally stupid characters start speaking smart. It's always funny to me. I suppose I should thank you. <laughs> Yes. If it weren't for you, I never would have realized my true potential. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Above Ninjaception. After Rachel starts to pamper the ninja, Randy takes it too far, which results in her getting stanked. Meanwhile, Howard is surviving by himself after Randy ditches him. This is a pretty uneventful segment. What else is there to say? Rachel is back after the last Halloween episode, which is nice, but other than that, nothing. Blow Wienerman up. This surprisingly good segment shows us how Randy and Howard met, which doesn't sound all that crazy, but this segment has a lot more. We see that McFist's wife, Marcy, was a daycare worker, and we see the origin for why Doug always opens his dumb, stupid mouth. And oh yeah, we see another past ninja! This is so cool and- What are a couple of little kids doing in a high school? Is that Joe Swanson? He doesn't show off any new powers or anything, but he has a really cool ninja suit. This segment also shows why Randy was chosen to be the ninja. This guy saw him destank Marcy. He's been in the background for most episodes, and I mean a lot. I think he's like some kind of scout who chooses the person to become the ninja because he gave Randy the suit and the Nomicon in episode 1. It's great we finally get some answers for that. Below enter the Nomicon. Randy and Howard start making bank when they sell Randy's weapons since he could just spawn more. This becomes a problem when Viceroy builds a ninja robot with all of those weapons. Randy struggles to combat his own gear so he uses the Thunder Punch armor to destroy the other ninja. That's a cool callback. I think this segment is whatever, but if only Randy had other attacks to use, like, I don't know, Air Fist, Tango Fireball, Earth Attack, Hydra Hand. This makes Randy seem a little dumb. Above Randy Cunningham's day off. After Doug is fired from being the school mascot, Randy and Howard are hired to do the job. But, oh no, there can only be one mascot. 
cut. So the two argue. Doug gets upset that he lost his job, so off he goes. Man, this segment was shit. I hate it more than my back hates me. Uh. Below Shoob Tube. <laughs> the Ninja and McFist need to team up when they crash land in Scrap City where a bunch of McFist's old robots live after they failed to stop the ninja, even though most of them get destroyed anyway. I like this location of Scrap City, and it's a cool idea, but I don't feel like we explore it enough. I feel like there's more potential with this premise. Mort shows up again, flying that pterodactyl. Mediocre segment, honestly. Below more tool combat. Randy forgets Howard's birthday, so he straight up lies to his best friend and puts him on a McFist spaceship. Howard gets sent into space and Randy needs to get the space monkey to help him. Randy almost kills Howard and the space chimp, but they get home safely. This is a bit of a weird premise, but it's done well enough, I guess. Below everyone ninja long. Principal Slimovitz is fired after Randy and Howard break too many rules. His replacement is a robot who puts all the students in a simulation. It's up to Slimovitz to defeat the robot principal while Randy holds off the student body. This is our first and probably only Slimovitz focused segment, and he's used alright. It's funny to me how they hype up how big of a role being the principal is, and the robot being defeated is terrifying. Below Best Buds. <laughs> Principal Slimovitz threatens to separate Howard and Randy because he believes they're bad influence on each other, unless they do well in an English test. But tests are for nerds, so they come up with a fake prophecy, make Slimovitz believe them, and now they're locked in the school. Randy leaving causes the principal to stank out, and the only way to stop him is to take the test. I like the stank Slimovitz grading their papers. I guess I was wrong when I thought last segment was the only one about Slimovitz, but this was a kind of boring and forgettable segment. Under Fartopia. <laughs> Randy and Howard try to attend Flute Girl's party as a sort of practice party because they think they're cooler than everyone there. This big ego leaves them to getting kicked out, so they need to come up with another plan. They pretend to defeat an already defeated robot, but this doesn't last long. One reference later, and Randy and Howard come clean and get let in anyway. We're getting near the end of the show and segments like this are becoming more and more disappointing. There's just nothing to this. And the lesson is just don't be a dick. Below Fudge Factory. <laughs> Randy and Howard, but mostly Randy, start a war between the two biggest food chains in Norrisville. <gasps> What's that? It's how many shits I give. This is the dumbest plot in the whole show, and Randy doesn't even ninja out until the last minute. Bottom of the list. <laughs> Principal Slimovitz is discontinuing the school's cake fries, which actually sound delicious. The school protests this with a mysterious figure leading the cause. It was just Howard though, who dumps battle all over the school. This premise is very similar to the Supsicle segment, which they even reference here, but it doesn't stop this one from feeling very been there done that. Below True Bromance. <laughs> Randy and Howard go on vacation, where they're constantly threatened of being kicked out if they don't chill out. McFist is also here. Randy gets him booted, but he comes back as a pirate to take over the island. I think McFist is actually pretty funny in this segment. Like, Multiple of his lines made me laugh. Why does your voice sound like my voice? <sighs> We're both using voice modulators. How are we gonna know who's talking? Everything else, however, is just dull and uninteresting. Mort is here again, and he actually contributes something, so... Uh... Below fake fight for your right to party. <laughs> Howard rips an absolute monster of a fart. I just wanna say... Oh, I can smell it through the screen! And blames it on the ninja. Everyone laughs at him, which really upsets Randy. Then all of a sudden, aliens come out of nowhere and kidnap Randy. What? Howard and some of the other students head down after them to save the ninja, and they blow the aliens up. Howard then claims the fart as his own, and everyone loves him. If this sounded like it was written by a five-year-old, well, it was just Howard making the second half of the segment up. The alien stuff never happened, and everyone thinks he's disgusting which he is. This segment didn't do anything all that bad, but it's just like the booger segment. It's really gross. So above a house of a thousand boogers. <laughs> On a school field trip, Howard buys a wish-granting idol in a gift shop. His wishes do come true, and this mysterious guy wants it too. This is actually Evil Julian, who's back once more, and the idol is actually the third sorcerer ball. Randy and Julian fight while Howard wishes through all the ball's juice, leaving it useless, except for one little drop. This is the second last episode, so thankfully we're getting more story-based segments, and I like the premise of this one. Below Welcome Back Catfish. Picking up right after the last segment, 
That one little drop from the Powerball infects the town water supply. Glad to see the whole town loves drinking their water because now everyone who drinks it has the urge to dig. They're all digging for the last Powerball under the control of evil Julian. Randy figures this out and protects the ball he has while Howard finds the last one. A battle begins between Randy and Julian with Randy getting corrupted by the ball's influence. Julian gets his robo hands on all the balls and sucks the juice out of the citizens. So now he has the power of all four balls. This was just great. Normally when Randy figures out what the Nomicon's message is, he sticks to it and saves the day. But in this segment, he completely ignores the Nomicon and saves his best friend over protecting the balls. Below when Howie and Randy met. Now let's get to the final episode. With evil Julian having the power of all the balls, Randy needs to go out and stop him since he's soon moving away. He finds Julian trying to summon some friends from the Land of Shadows. Howard's with him as well. The two get sent into the portal where they meet up with the normal Julian. Meanwhile, evil Julian is stealing the sorcerer's power. After a little adventure, Randy and his friends find this man chained up and a monster with a portal in his mouth. Randy goes through first and tries to fight evil Julian, but he's too damn strong. He decides to finally use that sorcerer key and actually freeze the sorcerer from his hole. The two swiftly steal back all the power from Julian and the sorcerer turns on Randy, who would have thought. Randy seals the power balls back in the hole and the day is saved. Julian and Howard escape the realm of shadows with the two Julians fusing back together, as well as that guy who fuses back with the sorcerer. Oh, he didn't free the sorcerer. He was the sorcerer, split in two. Oh, nifty bit of lore there. There was actually some fun interactions in this episode. The final fight in the school has Mick Fist talking with Julian, the sorcerer and Julian fighting, and Randy and the sorcerer just being in the same room is great. Do I think this is a good way to end the show? Yeah, I guess. It did feel like a series finale, but there wasn't really that wow factor. There is the fact that since the sorcerer has passed on, there really isn't much need for the ninja anymore, unless another threat shows up. The ninja choosing fella also appears at the end and spoke for once, foreshadowing the ninja's biggest battle, but we never get to see it as the show got canceled. I think this episode gets the honor of being placed under Evil Spirit Week. Now, here's every segment ranked from lowest to highest. Mick Clucker Busters. Shoot first, ask questions laser. m m m, -m, -m my Belogana. Club Ninja Dis. Fake fight for your right to party. Fudge Factory. Let them eat cake fries. True Bromance. The Prophecy of Hatsword. Fartopia. The Three Mascoteers. Shubtube. Wave Slayer. House of a Thousand Boogers. To Smell em Back. Ninja Fan. Wean em and Up. McSatchelay. McFist of Fury. Auto Know Better. On the Pool Front. Gossip Boy. Attack of the Killer Potatoes. Silent Punch. Deadly Punch. Space Cow Bros. Everyone Ninja Long. Rowing Down the House. The McHugger Games. Bash Johnson. 11th Grade Ninja. The Tale of the Golden Doctor's Note. New Kid on the Block. Pranks for nothing. Whoopi 2, The Wrath of Whoopi 2. Randy Cunningham's Day Off. Bro Money, Bro Problems. Rise of the Planet of the Robo Apes. The Brawn Also Rises. 30 Seconds to Math. Raw, Hero of the Past. Escape from Scrap City. More, Tool Combat. Bring Me the Head of Ranginal Bagel. Ninja Camp. Got Stank. McFear Factory. Monster Dumb. McFreaks. Weenerman Tested, Cunningham Approved. Flu Mignation. McNinja, brought to you by McFist. Escape from Detention Island. Der Monster Club. Viva El Nomicon. The Fresh Principal of Norrisville High. Best Buds. Last Doll on the Left. Lucius O Thunder Punch. Swampy Seconds. So You Think You Can Stank. The Curse of Mudfart. Sword Quest. Stanks Like Teen Spirit. All the Juice That's Fish to Swim. Living in Shoe Oblivion. Secret Stash. Relateral Damage. Unstank My Heart. Ninjaception. Working for the Weekend. Stank to the Future. Monster Drill. Hip Hop Apocalypse Now. Raiders of the Lost Nomicon. Mick One Armed and Dangerous. Not of the Living McFizzles. Happy Hanukkah, Howard Wienerman. Grave Puncher, The Movie. Sorcerer in Love, Part 2. Sorceress's Revenge. Randy Cunningham and the Sorcerer's Key. Dawn of the Driscoll. Big Trouble in Little Norrisville. Welcome back, Catfish. Debbie Metal. Snow Oklahoma. Julian's Birthday Surprise. A Apocalypse Now. Mastermind of Disaster Mind. Let the Wonk One In. Shloop, there it is. Sorcerer in Love. Winner Takes Ball. When Howie Met Randy. Enter the Nomicon. Balls Well That Friends Well. Evil Spirit Week. The Ninja Identity slash the Ninja Supremacy. Randy Cunningham, 13th Century Ninja. What a wonderful video. Now begs the question, do I like Handy Running Cam? Yeah, I do. And I would suggest that you watch the show yourself. There's no doubt that most of it was just boring filler, but there are some good episodes in there. My only complaint is that I think we should have explored more of the show's concepts. Like throw in another past ninja in there, or some more abilities. And now I never have to worry about Randy Cunningham ever again. People are gonna lose their cheese when they see this. <gasps> oh no. Move, baby Yoda! No! Hello, my dear loyal viewers. Sorry this video took so long to come out. There's three reasons why. One, I thought it was gonna be quicker to make than I thought it was. This was much bigger than I thought. 
two, I got kind of sick. So when I recorded some of the lines, um, you could probably tell because I'm a bit, <laughs> bit congested. Three, I was playing Paper Mario that came out, the new remake for A Thousand Year Door, and I kept getting distracted. So I apologize. Anyway, see you next video for Ninjago Crystallized.